In this video, we want to talk about completing the square. When you're completing the square, what you're trying to do is it allows you to go from a quadratic in standard form to a quadratic in vertex form. So to go from standard form to vertex form, we're going to introduce the technique known as completing the square. Okay, so for the first question here, I have a quadratic in standard form. What you do is you first identify your B value. So in this case here, my B value is 2. You take your B value, you divide it by 2, and then you square it. You always divide by 2. All right, you always take your B value, divide by 2, and square it, in which case we get 1 squared is 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number here, I'm going to add that number and subtract that number, and I'm going to put my plus 4 back down. So notice I'm just putting this everything else back down. So what I've done here is I've wrote my x squared plus 2x, and I've ident identified my b value. I have divided by 2 and squared it, which gave me a 1. You add and subtract 1. By adding and subtracting 1, you're not changing the question at all. But as soon as you do that, every time these three terms will always be a perfect square. What will this factor into? Well, this is going to factor into the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 1 is 1, and the sign is the same sign that you'll have here. This will be a plus. And notice you can quickly check this. You square the first, you get x squared. First times second times 2 gives you 2x. Square the last, you get plus 1. And then you just collect like terms. So in this case here, negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3. And now our equation is in vertex form. So you see we went from standard form to vertex form by using this method of completing the square. Again, it starts with identifying your b value, dividing by 2 and squaring it. All right, let's take a look at our next example here. So again, I have a quadratic in standard form. I want to put this in vertex form. So I'm going to identify the b value. In this case, the b value here is 12. So you take your b value, you divide it by 2, and you square it, in which case we get 6 squared, which is 36. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is you write down your first two terms, then you add that number, subtract that number, and then put down your minus 3 back down. So again, every time you do that, you've now forced a perfect square on these first three terms. This is going to factor into what? Well, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 36 is 6, and then you put that plus sign back down. Collect up like terms here, becomes negative 39, and now we have completed the square, and we are in vertex form now. Okay, let's continue with this question. All right, let's continue with this question. If you have a quadratic in standard form, if that a value is not a 1, you have to factor that out. So the idea of completing the square is you have to factor this 2 in this case out of the first two terms only. Only out of the first two terms. So I'm going to factor that 2 out, in which case I'm left with x squared minus 6x minus 1. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to complete the square on this. So we're going to ignore this 2, and we're going to complete the square on what's inside here. So again, you identify your b value which in this case it's negative 6, you divide it by 2 and square it, which gives you negative 3 quantity squared, which is 9. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add that 9 and subtract that 9 inside of the brackets. Again, because we're focusing all our attention on completing the square on this expression. The 2 and the minus 1 are on the outside, which we'll deal with later. Again, like it's always been the case, these first three terms will always be a perfect square. So what does this become? We write down our 2, and we're going to have a perfect square here. So everything else, notice I wrote back down. I put my minus 9 back down, my brackets, my minus 1, but these three terms will factor into a perfect square. So the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 is 3, and you copy the sign in front. If it's negative, you put a negative. So now we're almost in vertex form here. I want to collect like terms. My constant terms, I want to collect these up. So this coefficient of 2, I'm going to have to distribute to both the perfect square that we've created and my negative 9. So when I do that here, I get 2 
times x minus 3 quantity squared minus 18 minus 1. Now I can collect like terms. I can collect my constant terms together. And in which case here we get y equals 2 x minus 3 quantity squared minus 19. So you see here now I am in vertex form by completing the square. I went from standard form to vertex form by completing the square. So what's new in this example here is if you see if you have a coefficient that is not a 1, you have to factor that out of the first two terms. Then you complete the square as we did in the previous two examples, going through all the same steps, identifying your b value, adding, like dividing by 2 and squaring it, adding, subtracting that, forcing the perfect square. Now the only difference here is I want to be able to put the, co the constant terms together. I can't do that unless I distribute that 2. Once you distribute the 2, you can collect these up, and now we're in vertex form. All right, let's take a look at the next example here. Uh, if you notice here, the leaning coefficient uh, is not a 1. So I'm going to have to factor that out of the first two terms. Now you notice here, there's no c value. That's just a plus 0. So I'm going to factor that 5 out of the first two terms. And now we're going to focus our attention on completing the square of this inside term here. So we identified the b value, in which case the b value is negative 2. Divide by 2 and square it, which gives us 1. So I'm going to add and subtract that number inside the brackets. So this is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 1 plus 0. Now again, every time you do that, these first three terms will always factor into perfect square. So this is going to be 5. So I'm going to write this all back down. Notice I'm writing down everything I'm not touching. The 0, the right bracket, the minus 1, the 5, the left bracket. And I'm replacing this, these three terms here with uh, a perfect square. So uh, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 1 is 1, and then we copy that sign down the same, it's minus sign. So again, I want to collect up my numbers here. I can't do that unless I distribute this 5, so I'm going to distribute the 5 into my brackets here. And this gives me 5 times x minus 1 quantity squared minus 5. And now we have a quadratic expressed in vertex form. All right, that concludes our lesson on completing the square. You'll notice here that completing the square will allow us to go from standard form to vertex form. And again, study these examples. Uh, they cover the ideas behind completing the square and the techniques necessary to go from standard form to vertex form. Thank you.